What's up everybody? Welcome back to another episode of the Scuba Driver. My name is Steven. Today is a not so awesome day because I think I broke my car. That's right. I ripped the entire front lip off of my car a couple of nights ago. If you guys follow me on Instagram, you saw that. Um, so what happened is uh, I hit three separate things in about 24 hours uh, that was on the roadway. First thing was a giant piece of wood that uh, looks like fell off someone's truck and car in front of me missed it and I went right over it, pulled over, didn't see any damage at all. Uh, everything looked fine, it just sounded really, really bad. Checked my oil level, all that, everything seemed fine. The next morning, I'm literally driving to work and the truck in front of me loses a giant piece of like metal cable spool and I tried to go around it and just went right over it with my tires again, pulled over, everything was fine, didn't lose any tire pressure. Literally on my way in from work that night and uh, the car in front of me, um, well, this one car was kind of like trying to mess with me on the road. Usually that happens every once in a while. I usually just ignore it. But uh, he was trying to race me going down the road and I uh, kind of let him go right in front of me. He got right in front of me and swerved immediately. And there was a giant dead raccoon in the middle of the road and I couldn't do anything about it. There was a semi truck right behind me and I hit him head on. Uh, sounded really, really horrible, obviously. Got home, back the car in the garage and noticed my lip was completely gone. So. What I did is I just drove Sarah's car to work the next day and came back and noticed something terrible under my car, which I'm going to show you right now. So when I got home the other night, I uh, noticed there is in fact oil dripping out under my car. I put this box under there. This is just from last night, so it's been dripping fairly slowly. It looks like uh, I'm thinking I might have hit my oil drain plug. I have a Fumudo oil drain plug under there. so. I'm thinking it might have loosened it up, but anyways, I'm going to get the car in the air and we're going to see if there's any damage and then we'll talk about what the plans for my car are. in the air so uh we're gonna go under there see if we notice any damage got my flashlight right here hold on let's get up all right guys i think i already see the problem which i really hope it's all it is but this is the fumudo oil drain plug there it's like a quick release uh plug i put it on not too long ago during my last oil change actually so just a few thousand miles ago and you can see it is completely loose so uh that is uh that's very very scary so what happened is uh you know, when I hit the uh, when I hit the raccoon, it knocked this. So that is the only bad thing about having this thing kind of hanging down. So when I redo my oil change, I'm going to make sure I tighten this up uh, all the way to spec, and uh, you know, double check it and make sure it's still loose and not leaking oil. Um, you can see it caused like a little bit of damage under my car, but for the most part, I don't really see anything broken. Just uh, this little shield right here. It's missing a few pieces or some plastic hanging down so i'll get all that cleaned up but i'm thinking that the only damage that it caused was it knocked this oil drain plug so what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna tighten this up make sure um it stops leaking oil after that make sure it's not coming from anywhere else which i doubt that it is since everything else is fairly protected under here and uh, once i notice that the oil isn't leaking anymore we'll get an oil change going and uh, we'll get this video rolling before i do the oil change what i'm going to do is I'm just gonna start the car and let it run for just a few minutes. Make sure that that is gonna fix the issue. All I did was just tighten that pl plug up. Uh, I mean, I can literally tighten it with my fingers. And we're gonna see if the oil starts dripping a little bit while it's running. And if not, then I'm pretty sure all the damage was just that oil drain plug. But yeah, I mean, at least the car still looks sick. Although I need a lip. Uh. All right, I let the car run for about 15 minutes and no extra oil dripped out. So I'm fairly certain that uh, that was the only problem was hitting the oil drain plug. Just gotta get our oil filter off here. There we go. We'll show you guys how cool this uh, Fumudo plug is. So all you gotta do 
is there is a little plastic clip right here that actually holds the uh, the little uh, switch in place here, the little lever in place. So I'll set that off safely to the side. And then to drain your oil, it's very, very easy and simple. You just take this little metal clip, pull it down and over to the side, and your oil is draining. And I got my thumb in it, but that's okay. So easy. So that Fumuto oil drain plug is very, very convenient when it comes to draining your oil really quick, making it way less messy, all of that. But keep in mind, uh, just make sure it's all the way tight. I do blame this on myself. There's a very good chance that I didn't tighten it down uh, all the way properly to spec. So just make sure you tighten it down because it does hang a little lower than like your typical oil drain plug would. I wouldn't be very concerned about it like hitting the clip. It would literally have to hit the clip, remove the clip, take the lever, push it down, pull it up and push it over to the side and then pull it up for any oil to drain out. But it could actually hit the drain plug just like mine did and loosen the actual nut on it itself. But I don't think it would be able to rip the clip off and all that. It would take a pretty serious accident for that to happen, it seems like. But um, just make sure if you do get that, tighten it all the way down. And just look out for any objects in the road. I did hit, I've hardly hit anything other than just scraping a little bit in my car. Uh, the three things that I hit were, I don't, I don't want to blame them on someone else, but they were just things in the road that I just couldn't avoid at the time that it happened. And uh, anyways, it's getting all drained out now. I'm going to go ahead and clean all this up and get ready for my oil change and we'll go from there. Alright guys, so for the oil and oil filter today, we're going to use the uh, Mobile One Extended Performance Oil Filter. I'll get this lubed up and put it uh, on top of there. And we're going with the Mobile One Full Synthetic 5W30. I have actually been running this in my car for the last couple of years. I've never used any other oil. Um, I've looked it up multiple times and this seems like a really good option for the kind of driving that I do, the weather that I live in. Uh, so let me know what kind of oil do you guys run in your FRS or BRZ? You think this is a good choice so far, other than uh, what happened today? My car has had literally no issues. I need to knock on some wood, I know, but zero issues. I'm at about 120,000 miles. Um, as you guys know, all the mods that are done to my car. I drive pretty moderately. You know, sometimes I get on it when I'm on some back roads, but I don't track the car. I don't do anything crazy in it and uh, literally no issues at all. Um, but anyways, we're going to get this oil change started. So we got the car all cleaned up and it's looking pretty good. I went ahead and ran it for about 20 minutes or so and didn't see any oil leaking out of it, which is a really, really good sign. So we're gonna hop in the car, take it for a drive, make sure we're all good. And then we'll talk about what we're gonna do to the car next. Five degrees this morning to about 70 right now so it's an absolutely beautiful day here in North Carolina but yep I got under the car didn't see any oil leaking whatsoever so I think we're good I think uh, that was the only problem that happened got all that little plastic out from under the car and I think we're good um, now all I have to decide is uh, what am I gonna do about this uh, front lip situation we have here if that lip is completely shattered in a million pieces who knows I know the raccoon probably hit it but also the truck that was behind me definitely annihilated that thing. Um, so I got a couple options. One, I can get the same semi, same uh, front lip. I got that one off of eBay for really, really cheap a few videos back. If you guys watch, I can put a link in the description of me installing that front lip. But I can do uh, something similar like that, something really cheap since they break very easily. Or I can do a full carbon fiber front lip as well. Uh, I've looked into those before. My only hesitation with that is, is they're a lot more expensive under side of my car I don't know I drive this car every single day I daily drive it I don't know if I would want to risk that I'd be very upset I'd be a lot more upset right now 
if uh, the lip I destroyed was a full carbon fiber one. Or, hear me out on this one, my friend Kevin and I, we've been talking, we might be able to make a full custom metal splitter. Uh, we could do a chassis mounted splitter on the front, completely fabricate it, make it up, um, make it strong enough to where we could actually stand on it, and of course it would protect my car and give it some pretty cool looking aero as well. So let me know what you guys think in the comments below. What should I do? Should I do same cheap front lip, no front lip, carbon fiber front lip, or should we do a full custom uh, splitter on the front? Anyways, I'll enjoy not scraping everything right now without having this slip on the car, and I won't rush into anything new. Let me know what you guys want me to do to the, with the car. Anyways, thanks so much for watching today's video. I'm glad it wasn't worse. Glad I didn't completely destroy my car. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.